Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce uh, solar heating systems. Uh, the solar heating system has different applications, either to heat up water for use uh, at home or in agricultural applications or industrial applications. So what are the main part of the solar heating systems? Uh, the, the solar heating system mainly composed of uh, a solar collector and a storage of heat that can be gained from these solar collectors. And of course, here we have some kind of load that uh, uh, basically the applications that we are interested in. So what happened here is that the solar, the solar in, uh, uh, energy or the solar radiation hit uh, or hit the surface of uh, a solar collector that I'm going to, to introduce you in a second. And then the, inside this uh, solar collector, there is, there is uh, some kind of fluid, either water or air, or maybe other fluid like uh, alcohol, but most likely the water is the common one. Uh, the, the water, of course, has some issues during the, the winter time, maybe can have also some kind of antifreeze uh, chemical to prevent it from getting uh, frozen and then affect the pipes of the systems. So again, this is uh, solar radiation heat up the, the fluid and this fluid uh, goes, uh, of course, the cold, cold, cold side should be in the lower here. And then uh, for example, here, this is a bomb that um, uh, sucks the, the, the water, for example, here from the storage and uh, bump it through the solar collector to heat it up. And then this can be back to the solar collector, to, to the storage, or can be go through a heat exchanger between the solar collector and the storage. And then this is stored heat in the form of hot water can be stored for some time. Uh, until used, or until actually during the the downtime of the sun. So this uh, to to make sure that there is enough heat to be uh, uh, to be um, withdrawn from this storage when needed. So and then this hot uh, uh, water can be, uh, of course, bumped to the application to the process. And of course, here we can also have uh, some kind of uh, heat exchanger between the coming uh, cold water in this case and the outlet uh, heat. Um, so this is maybe a very uh, complex system, but there are some other uh, simpler systems that doesn't have this kind of two heat, heat, heat exchangers. So uh, in this case, just composed of a solar collector and a storage and the application. Uh, of course, we should have some kind of control to control the flow between the solar collector and the application, but this is just uh, give you the whole picture about these systems. So let's say us to introduce the solar collector. What are they? So the solar collectors are uh, the main component of the solar heating system. And this uh, solar collectors can be divided into uh, two main, main categories. Uh, one here, is a, it's called uh, flat blade solar collector, and the other one, evacuated tube solar collector. I'm going to introduce the first one, which is uh, the simplest form of solar collectors, which is a flat blade solar collector. The flat blade solar collector is uh, a frame of metal or wood. Inside this frame, there is a, a, a absorber blade, mainly metal, uh, black, painted with black color. And in the back of this uh, absorber blade, there is uh, insulating insulation layer to prevent the heat losses from the back of the solar collector. And here, there is some kind of tubes, uh, two big tubes. Here, one here in this end and one in the other end. end. This is a, they are called the headers or heating, header tubes. And this header tube, uh, they, they uh, collect the water from the inlet, from uh, the return back from the application or from the storage. 
and through this uh, uh, header, the water is pumped through uh, risers. This riser is small tubes that absorb the, the heat from the solar collector and getting the, uh, the, the water. In this case, just I get the example as, as water and you may actually consider this as other fluid inside these tubes. And then uh, the, the, the water getting uh, hot and end up in the outlet here or here. So uh, besides this uh, tubes, there is some kind of glazed panel here that cover the component inside this box. And this glazed panel or glazed cover uh, is about is either glass or plastic. And this um, uh, glass or plastic is important to allow the solar radiation to uh, to transmit through it to the, the the absorber blade or the tubes, and also it prevent the the long wave uh, uh, that uh, reflected from the absorber blade to the atmosphere again. Um, of course, uh, either glass or plastic they are common, and the selection depend on several factor about the the characteristic of the plastic type or the glass. Also, it depends on the cost. Um, of course, the, the plastic may be uh, having some issue for the lifetime. Uh, however, also the glass may be have some issue during the, the winter if there is some kind of uh, a hail or something that can actually break the glass or uh, uh, maybe also uh, heavy. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the glass is heavier than the plastic. So all of this uh, consideration should be considered in uh, in the selection of the glazed, uh, glazed uh, panel here. So uh, again, how this works, um, there is uh, how the solar collector work. The solar radiation come from the sun. It go through the, the glazed panel and transmit it to the absorber blade that absorb the heat from the sun and then the heat is uh, trans transferred to the, the liquid inside this uh, risers. And then, uh, uh, and then the, the heat is uh, transferred to the outlet here to the application. Um, of course, we will have uh, 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 some kind of control for the flow. We say during the day, we may actually have a continuous flow to uh, again as much as possible from the sun, and maybe during the evening, you don't have to have some kind of flow because basically there is no uh, solar uh, energy come from the sun. So here, this is uh, just a complete system with uh, gla glazing uh, panel and uh, insulation. Some other uh, uh, types of um, solar collector might be also similar, uh, like this one here, this is unglazed solar collector. So, which is basically the two uh, header tubes here, one here and one there. And here, this is a cold end in this case, and this is a, a hot end. So you bump the cold fluid here, go through the pipes, and then come out through the outlet uh, header. Uh, more similar even is that uh, this is just um, uh, serpentine, serpentine uh, plastic pipe collector, which is very sim similar. That uh, it's just a, a black tube, a black tube like uh, this kind of irrigation tube. They they make it just as absorber blade. At the same time, they are collecting the heat from the sun and then transferred to the the fluid here. So you have a fluid bump through these pipes and end up to uh, outlet of the uh, this kind of uh, serpentine uh, plastic pipes. Again, the efficiency, of course, the the one with glazed uh, glazed uh, uh, panel will be more efficient compared with this one. Again, the fluid may be also again it's maybe water or or, or air. Sometimes in in the air uh, designs, you may not actually have some kind of uh, pipes, uh, but you may actually have just uh, blowing the air over the solar collector or the solar as absorber blade and then goes to the outlet of the solar collector. Many factors, of course, affecting the, the, the efficiency of the solar 
collector, including the solar intensity in the location that you are uh, installing the system, or the, of course the insulation of the box, uh, the flow rate of water. Uh, so the more actually flow you have, you may actually have a better efficiency, but of course the, the outlet temperature will be um, lower than using a lower flow rate of the fluid through the solar collector. Uh, the other type of the solar collector besides this um, uh, flat blade, this is what they call it, uh, evacuated tubes, solar collector, which are mainly uh, evacuated tube here. This is a glass type of uh, uh, evacuated tube, maybe two layers. And between these two layers, there is some kind of vacuum. And uh, inside this tube, there is a, a, a blade or... or um, absorber blade inside and then inside this uh, tube also there is another copper heat pipe uh, what happened here this is uh, copper heat, heat pipes end up with some kind of uh, uh, end that this end is inserted into the uh, copper manifold here so this is just uh, the component of each of these tubes here so these tubes this is evacuated tubes has this kind of uh, 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 pipe or cover pipe with some kind of uh, reservoir, small reservoir, and this reservoir end up into the copper manifold. The copper manifold, again, it's just uh, a pipe that carry the, 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 the water or the fluid from the application and then heat it up and then bump it to the application, or of course, it still also can have some kind of storage between the application and the solar collector here. So what happened here, uh, when the sun heat up the, uh, the evacuated tubes, it, uh, the, 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 the solar energy uh, 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 go through these uh, walls and then heat up the solar collector and then through the solar collector, the heat is transferred to the copper heat pipe. Uh, and when the, 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 the copper heat pipe is uh, increased in its temperature, the uh, the liquid or the fluid here, this is uh, mainly non-toxic liquid with low evaporative uh, temperature. Uh, it's getting very hot. And then due to the, the, the heat gain, the fluid become, if it's liquid here, so it's become vapor and then uh, transferred to the other end of the, the copper pipe. Uh, through this process, what happened, this is, very hot vapor, and then if it touch with, if it get in touch with uh, the cold end or the cold water come from the the application, the this uh, uh, hot um, vapor, it's condensate, means that it's lost the heat, uh, the heat to the fluid that is used for the application. So uh, losing the heat from the 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 vapor means that it will be condensated and be back again to the end of the the, the evacuate of the copper pipe. So what happened here again? The 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 hot end here. It's inside the header, and then it lost the the heat to the main the, the fluid from the application, and then it cooled back. So the the vapor become liquid and they come back here to the other end. And this uh, cycle repeated again and again. So if you look at the, the heat uh, gradient over the heat pipes, so you, you, you can see here that this is the, the hot end and then the cold end will be at the end of the, uh, of the evacua evacuated tube here. Uh, you can actually have uh, as many of this evacuated tube as needed. So based on the solar intensity, and you can expect that uh, uh, you can you can calculate how many uh, evacuated tubes that you need for your application. Of course, these um, uh, systems are more efficient to compare with the flat blade solar collector, and uh, of course, still also more expensive than this uh, uh, flat blade. In fact, you can actually construct your flat blade yourself, but maybe the evacuated need some kind of professional or companies to install to to fabricate them. Okay. So what kind of uh, solar heating system are commonly used is uh, they are uh, either passive or active. The passive systems basically is very simple here. It's a kind of storage and this storage 
have the cold water come from the application, either from whom or from other application, and then here the hot water goes to the application. So this is storage uh, tank, and then you have a solar collector, and here the storage uh, basically uh, stores the heat from the solar collector until used. There is some kind of auxiliary heater, uh, of course, if there is no enough uh, solar energy in uh, in the in the area where the solar collector is insulated is installed, so you may actually have some kind of auxiliary heater to compensate or to to make uh, uh, hot water available twenty four hour a day. So uh, if you look at this system here, this is passive means that the 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 flow of the water or the the flow of uh, uh, the uh, the media for heating is uh, just uh, go under uh, under the uh, dynasty uh, differences. So there is no bumps or uh, other um, forces to move the water through the system here. Uh, more actually uh, uh, complicated system, maybe also this is the active system. Active system means that you have some kind of bump. The bump, uh, bump the, the the water through the solar collector and then back to the uh, the application. If you look at this one here, so there is no uh, storage in this case. Uh, just you go uh, directly from your application. For example, you have a, a tank or you have uh, some kind of uh, a faucet or something that uses hot water. So basically, the water goes from the uh, uh, the application here or from the, the main line of water and go through the solar collector and go back to your application again. Uh, this is uh, another system here. This is more sophisticated systems. They have a storage system, a storage tank, and then you have some kind of bumps to go through the solar collector and then back to the application. It may also have some kind of uh, heat exchanger between the uh, water comes from the storage and to the uh, from the storage and from and to it. So, and also the same situation here from the application and to the application itself. So again, the, so the, the efficiency of the solar collector is uh, the ratio of uh, usable heat uh, gained uh, from the collector divided by the, the heat transfer to the fluid during any period of time. So basically you have to compare how much energy you gain from the, uh, the, the sun and how much actually energy is added to uh, or uh, delivered to the solar collector. Uh, with that, I would like to stop here and uh, I welcome your feedback. Thank you. Have a good day.